Hey everybody, in this video we're going to look at the new release from Villiers, the Filante SLR. And we'll compare it to the Zero SLR and the Cento 10 NDR. So here it is, the new Villiers Filante SLR. And this is the Dura-Race DI2 version, £9,200-ish, because I couldn't find a price for the UK. And it's made of some stuff with crystals and liquids and polymers in it, all very fancy-dancy. And it's coming in at 7.15 kilograms. So I looked up the word Filante in Google Translate, and it turns out that in English that means racy. And at which point I thought that would be then cool to cut to a picture of the Noah Fast disc from Ridley, uh, but unfortunately going to the Ridley website, infuriatingly for me, that's as big as I can make the picture. I honestly can't understand why you wouldn't have a nice big picture on your website of your fancy bicycle. Anyhow, when I first saw this bike, my immediate thought was, eh, what's this then? Does it replace the Zero SLR? It looks so similar. What is it? I was all a bit confused. Now I must confess that I possibly don't know the Villiers lineup of bikes as well as I should, because there's something that grips my Swede about. Villiers and actually quite a lot of the Italian brands. If you take for instance Giant or Specialized or Trek or the mainstream brands like that, they tend to put their lineup on their website in a nice simple way with all the different group sets and you can see a price and you know exactly where you are with each version of each model of their bikes, which is perfect for my channel because that's what I do. I compare the different versions of bikes from manufacturers' websites. Now when it comes to the Italian brands, and they're all kind of different. It's all quite bespoke the way they do it. But Villiers, for example, they just put a list of all the different versions of the bike that you can buy. What that means is there's no individual pictures of the different versions, which makes it very difficult for me to compare anything which frustrates me. Maybe I don't come to their website as much as I should. The other thing that grips my Swede a little about Villiers again, they don't list their bottom bracket drop, which is my first point of call when I line up these bikes. So I have to effectively make an educated guess about what their BB drop is to be able to line up their bikes. Pinarello, another Italian brand, they don't list their wheelbase which is pretty annoying. And also just to be annoying, a word that I've spent my whole life spelling D-I-S-K, I finally get used to spelling it D-I-S-C because for some reason that's what we now call discs on disc bikes, except Pinarello called it a disc, as in a disc, D-I-S-K, literally just to confuse me. And when you're not a very good spellerer, it doesn't take much to confuse me. And here's a question for you, and I realize I've gone completely off track here, but Comment down below if you find all these fancy websites that these bike manufacturers are using now really annoying. I just want to see the bikes in a grid formation where I can see the different models and the prices. I don't want to have to scroll through all these stupid things like this. Really annoying. Because now if I want to go back to the other end, I've got to go like this. And yep, lovely bike. Pinarello, to be fair, they do good pictures. But where's the price? I need to know how much it costs. Urgh. There we go. I shall calm down now. So back to why this bike confused me initially. I knew there was a Cento 10 Air that looked like this and I'm pretty sure this was hyped up as Villiers aero bike at the time when it came out. That then became the Cento 10 Pro which had disc brakes on it. Again I think this was hyped as the aero bike and now when you go to the website there's a Cento 10 NDR and I think with my brief flick through of the website I just assumed that this was the aero bike now. However if we compare it to the new Filante you can immediately see there that it's more of an endurance type geometry on the Cento 10 NDR, so not a full blown race bike, which suddenly then makes the new bike make more sense, or a bit more sense anyway, because it's effectively Villiers aero race bike. So it complements their Zero SLR. And if we flip between the two here, the Filante Aero Bike, the Zero SLR New Breed All Round Lightweight Slightly Aero Integrated Race Bike, as being ridden by the Astana Race Team. However, flicking between the two, you can see that they are pretty similar. And though more aero, it's definitely not as full blown aero as, say, the new Canyon Aeroed. So obviously quite a big difference there. Much fatter, more aero tubing on the Canyon Aeroad. So I would kind of suggest that the Filante fits in between 
the Zero SLR Philante Aero Bike. What do you think? Comment down below. Are you tempted with this type of aero? Or would you be more inclined to go full aero if you're going to go aero? Or are you going to go lightweight climbing bike? And I have reviewed this Zero SLR before and pointed out how annoying I find this tiny little bit here, which is quite funny because it's so small, but it actually annoys me that much. So it's quite nice to see that on the Philante at least, we don't have that annoying little bit there, which is good because that would drive me nuts. Geometry wise between the Philante and the Zero SLR, there's literally two millimeters in it. It's almost like, why not just make them the same? Why? I don't really understand why you would even bother having a two mil difference. Maybe it does make a difference, but it does seem very teeny weeny. So that mean that you can set these bikes up very similar. And in fact, between these pictures, we can just see that the Philante has got more spaces in there. In my last video, I showed the Zero SL, which is the cheaper version of the SLR from Villiers. So there's another alternative if you want to go with this brand. Obviously much more cost effective there. I was quite intrigued by the Villiers setup they have on their stems here to hide the cables. And at first glance, I thought it looked a bit like the Vision ACR system. Quite similar, but if you fade between the two, they're obviously totally different, but quite similar. So another bike I wanted to just have a quick look at it against was the Tarmac SL7 from Specialized. And this is fading between the two. And as we can see, they've both got the drop seat stays. Specialized is a lot higher up at the front here. Which is quite interesting. You've obviously got a lot more clearance here on the Specialized. believe you can fit up to a 30 millimeter tire on this bike whereas the tarmac i think you can fit a 32 mil tire on so yeah a bit more clearance so there we go this was just a real quick video just to have a quick look at the philante and try and understand where it fitted in villiers range i think we've kind of established that what do you think leave a comment down below lightweight all-rounder Slightly more aero, lightweight-ish, not quite a full aero, aeroed type beating bike. So yeah, put your comments down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, and I'm currently working on video that's taking me a while, so just bear with me, but it's basically going to be as many bikes as I can find with the 105 group set, and then I'll sort them and try and find what's the best value when it comes to the 105 group set. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you next time.